G'day, welcome to the next video on trigonometric functions and today we're going to talk about fitting them to data. But before we get started, let me just go through a crash course of transformations of functions. For example, here's the graph of y equals sine of x, which we did in a lovely video beforehand. Maybe not so lovely, but we did in a video beforehand. And voila, there it is. But let me start messing around with the formula and see if we can sort of see what happens geometrically. For example, what if I doubled the x values, made it y equals sine of 2x? Make them right, race through things twice as fast. But what does that do geometrically? Well, that'll give me a graph that looks like this, I suppose. So I'll still have the uh, 180 and the 360 and the 1 and the negative 1 and the y-axis and the x-axis. But think about this. When x is 0, I still get the point 0 inside the sine. 0 equals sine of 0. So it still goes through the origin. But here's the thing, when x is 180, 2x has the value 360 already. This runs through a cycle in 360, but this one's going through twice as fast, because when x is, one, x is 180, I'll get 2 times 180 within the sign, I'm at 360 already. So it indeed is running through twice as fast. So instead of completing one cycle in 360, this graph must be completing one cycle in 180. And again, another 180, and again another 180, and if I want to go the reverse direction. So that is indeed whipping through those x values twice as fast. Now, if I had, say, instead, here's how I'm going to argue it, 4x there, say, okay, 0 is still behaving like 0, still starts at 0, but now when x is 90, I've got sine of 360 going on. Three, 90 is behaving like 360, whip, whip through four times as fast. I'll actually do a whole cycle up to 90. Then do another cycle, the next 90, another cycle, the next 90, another cycle, the next 90. You can kind of see what's going on. Uh, one half of x will slow things down. I need x to have the value 720 before I get to sine of 360, before I get to one full cycle. So this will be, okay, one full cycle, I'll finally get to one full cycle at x equals 720. So you sort of reason your way through what these little coefficients inside the sine is going to do. It's going to change the speed. But yeah, right now I've got sine uh, of 2x on my graph. That's it. It's gone through. I've made 180 behave like 360. One full cycle 360, now happening at 180. Grand. Uh, let's keep messing around with it. What well, if I put a number in front of everything? Y values are now triple what they were before. Oh, the y values are now triple what they were before. So actually, I'm going to be really sneaky. <laughs> since, I, since I apparently don't care about getting correct scale on my graphs, well, if this is one high, it'll now be triple that, it'll be three high. If this is one, uh, one low, it'll now be three low. That's it. That's my graph of y equals three of sine of 2x. It's the same graph, but everything's been stretched up by factor three. All the positive numbers become three times as high, all the negatives become three times as low, and so on. Every y value is now triple what I just had before. I get a graph like that. All right, actually, let's make it worse. Um, right now, I've got the number 180 behaving like 360. What if I did this? X minus 90. Whoa, whoa. What's the graph of that going to be? Well, my brain says, okay, I've just did something. I made 90 degrees now behave like zero. I now made 90 degrees behave like zero. So the graph must be whatever's doing at zero before is now doing it at x equals 90. So what I was doing at zero before is now happening at x equals 90. So let's, oh, 90, 180, 270, 360, 450. Um, it's, it's the same graph three times stuff, so because it's still at the same amplitude, same height. But now, with what I was doing before is now doing it at 90. So it must be this. Uh, what I was doing before, now at 90. So still a cycle of 180. One cycle in 180. Another one cycle in 180, and so on. Whoa, whoa, and let me check something, because I'm, I'm getting confused. My brain is getting, I've got this little hazy feeling in my brain right now, because this is how you learn, it's how you think, you go through haze. I've still got the cycle of 180 there. Is 270 indeed behaving like the number 360? Put in x equals 270, I get 270 take away 90, that's 180. 2 times 180 is 360. Yes, 270 is like the number sine of 360 degrees. Bingo, this is the correct picture. In fact, that's a good, good way to think about this. Ask yourself, what value of x behaves like zero? And what value of x 
behaves like 360 because they're the key two points for a, for, a, for a periodic function. So see where it starts at zero. What number is behaving like zero? Uh, mm, x equals 90 behaves like zero inside those brackets. What number is behaving like 360? Oh, quick, quick algebra. Two times something is 360, so x minus 90 better be 180, so x better be 270. Yes, 270 is behaving like 360. Get that? Always look for where zero is. What? What? Inputs behave like zero, and which, what, which input behaves like 360, and that's going to tell you what's going on. And in fact, let me make this one step further. Suppose I say, I want three times that, and I want everything shifted up by two, please. I want all the y values to go up by two, in which case I say, okay, it's going to be this graph I've just had, but now please make all the y values two higher. So I guess it goes, that negative three now becomes a negative one, that zero now becomes a two, that three becomes a five. So I guess my graph is like this. Whoa, whoa, okay. Now, I shouldn't go so fast because this is actually very confusing. Uh, okay, so, all right, so, I'm gonna, actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, gonna to show you my thinking. I'm going to pretend I've got nothing to work on. Someone just gave me this first. Whoa, so what's my thinking here? Um, so, when I, if I'm someone who's given me this, I can see right away that zero, x equals 90 is behaving like zero. So, I know it's all starting at 90. So, sine graph starting at 90. Uh, my brain says, okay, what number's behaving like 360? And I go through that work again, I see that 270 is behaving like 360. So I know one full cycle's happening there. I know it's basically the sine graph, which is normally centered about the x-axis, but everything's gonna be shifted up by two. So everything's gonna be centered about the what line y equals two this time. So I can see that, I understand that, I understand that and that. Um, everything's now three times as big as it should be. So it goes three up and three down. Usually it goes one up and one down, but now it's gonna go three up and three down. So it must be a sine graph starting there. Uh, one full cycle between 90 and 270, so that makes it starts, ends there. A full cycle means half a period's that. So it must go up and down and up and down like that. And since it's three high, I know this must be two plus three is five. Uh, two minus three is negative one, three down. There's the graph. There's the graph of y equals uh, at zero, I guess it's going down, doo -doo -doo -doo, and so on. All right. Wow. Speedy, speedy, speedy. All right, very speedy. Of course, that just takes some practice, but then actually you should start, I mean, here's the lovely thing. Of course, if I want to graph this thing, just, just shove it into Desmos. But you can actually see the structure in an equation. You can actually like make, make math come alive literally by seeing the pictures of that, but just ask you the obvious questions. What's the core feature of a sine graph? Well, it starts at zero, ends at 360, does one hoop like that. And this is clearly just a sine graph that's been messed around with. Can you see through the clutter, see through the mess and literally get the picture right away? And do you know what? You can, you can. And in fact, that's what people do. Um, often you'll see phenomena in nature where things come in cyclic fashions. They weigh up and down and up and down. They say, okay, we'd have to model that data with a trigonometric function, a sine graph, or it could be a cosine graph, you can do whatever you like. So let me do an example that I'm gonna make up, completely made up, of how to fit a trig function to some given data. But first I need to clean the board and create some given data. Back in a moment. Okay, here's my completely made up question. The population of wombats in Adelaide, Australia seems to rise and fall in a cyclic fashion. In the hottest month of February, it's at a minimum value. The population sees about 7,000 wombats in Adelaide during the hottest month of February. And then by the time you get to the nice lush season of winter in Adelaide, Australia, the population doubles by August. So I have, uh, have 7,000 in February, about 14,000 in August, and it'll start falling down again, cycling between those two values. Fact. Please use a trigonometric function to actually model this data, this cycle. All right, so okay, so let me, let me sort of get this going. So um, let me graph the functions. The pictures are always better than just trying to think your way through stuff. So we've got something going on here. Uh, we've got wombats, we've got time and months. I'll make time and months. Uh, February to August. Okay, so six months, it goes from 7,000 to 14,000. So at, I'll, I'll, I'll do month numbers. At month two, and then six months later is August month eight. And another six months later will be 14, which is month, uh, month 14 is month two, which is February again. Right, great. So at its lowest, it's 7,000. So this is P for population. So in the month of February, it's 7,000. In the month of August, it's double that, 14,000. 14,000, double that. And then it rises and falls. So six months later, it's down again. Six months later, it's up again, and so on. And that's all I've got. Um, it seems like the middle value, I guess, is this line here, uh, halfway between, oh, what's halfway between 7,000 and 14,000? Uh, 10,500, 10, 
So it seems like we're oscillating 7,000 down, 7,000 up above that middle line of 10,000. Oh no, we're oscillating what, 3,500 up, 3,500 down, about that middle line of 10,500. Oh, oh, okay, so we've got something like this going on. Uh, it goes up, and then goes down, and then goes up, and then goes down, and so on. Oscillating uh, with a range of 3,500 up and down from 10,500. So I want to use a trig function to model this data. Okay, okay. Now I ask myself, okay, uh, does that look like a sine curve or a cosine curve to me? Um, well, the answer is both. Uh, since, okay, since I've got the number eight here and the actual data value of 14,000, I'm going to mimic this with a cosine graph. I'm going to get my brain thinking about this and it keeps going forwards and backwards. So I'm going to say this is really a cosine graph that's been messed around with. In fact, can I now write down the formula? Let's, let's try it. Let's try it. So Y is basically a cosine graph. But I know it's going to go up 3,500, down 3,500. It's scaled by a factor of 3,500. It's cosine of some stuff, which is going to scare me. But I know everything's being shifted away from the horizontal axis up 10,500 higher. All right, great. So far, so good. But let me give myself some more room in those parentheses. I can get a lot of room in those parentheses, plus 10,500. Messy, 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 messy. Ooh, do, do, do. Lots of room, plus room, plus 10,500. All right. Now, now, I see that x equals 8 is behaving like 0. So I'm going to make that happen. x minus 8 is behaving like 0. But I know I'm not doing a full period of 360. Uh, in 360, I'm actually doing a, a period by some scale factor, which I don't know. So I'm going to write K for scale factor, because I'm nervous. Don't know what it is. Not even trying to figure, figure it out just yet. But there is the basic stretch of my graph. Let's make that even neater. Y equals 3,500 times the cosine of something to be worked out uh, of plus 10,500. My only trouble is I need to get this number K correct. But I do know that this number, oh, what is that? Another 10 months makes 20. 20. So I know, ah, aha, I know I want the time 20 to behave like the number 360. I want time, oh, but, oh should be doing time, time t. I want time 20 to behaving like 360. That is, if I put 20 here, I want k times 20 minus 8 to behave like 360. Am I off the screen? Maybe I'm off the screen. If you can't read that, let me do this. I want k times 20 minus 8 to be the answer 360. I want 20 in this formula to give me 360. I want, I want t equals 20 to behave like 360. But that's just algebra now. So what am I saying then? Um, 12k, 12k is uh, 360. k better be 30. 30. k better be 30. Bingo. There is a trigonometric function that actually mimics that data. Beautiful! Just thinking my way through it. I was really fast then, I know, because I've got, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years sort of thing, but, but there it is. You can see your way through it. And look, t equals 8 is behaving like 0 for the cosine function. Yep, that's what a cosine function t equals 8. Uh, t equals 20 uh, gives me 30 times 12 is 360. Yep, t equals 20 is behaving like the number 360, so I'm going through one full cycle in that little section of the graph there. I see I'm bouncing up 3,500, down 3,500. Yep, and everything's been shifted up to be bouncing around that middle line of 10,500. There is a trigonometric function which mimics this, uh, this wombat population in this made-up example. Cool, cool. Now, of course, here's your challenge. I used a cosine function. Can you redo this problem using a sine function instead? Maybe think, have your brains think, no, no, I choose to start there and do my analysis from there, because that looks like a sine graph follows that. So what else do you get if I chose to go with a sine curve, curve first instead? Great stuff.